Tis the season. Tis the giving season. Something that I would know a lot about because my full name is actually Uzma Ali Claus. Yeah. I, I am actually the estranged child of Mr. and Mrs. Claus. You know, dad always tried to get me involved in the family business, but I had my heart dead set on going to undergrad to study neuroscience and use that degree to make YouTube videos. He didn't really like that, you know, we don't have the best relationship, but he did give me this hat. And it is because of my upbringing and my education that I am able to tell you all about the science of gift giving and the paradox of altruism. What? Oh my god, what does that even mean? What do I mean paradox of altruism? Well, Stanford defines a behavior as altruistic when it is motivated by a desire to benefit someone other than oneself. Other than oneself. As I will prove today, we gain much immaterial wealth from doing an altruistic deed, such as gift giving to us this season. So we are benefiting altruism, even though its very definition is that it's not supposed to benefit us. That's my paradox here, okay? So folks, hop into my sled, buckle up, and prepare to have your bells jingled, because today we're gonna talk about what are we gonna, what are we gonna cover two things that we gain from gift giving, one being cognitive benefits and the other being affective benefits. Woo, just yippee, uh, don your gay apparel, bitches, let's go. Let's define gift quickly. Merriam-Webster defines it as something voluntarily transferred by one person to another without compensation. Sorry, I wanted to get that out of the way because I always hate that part of video essays. I spend like the first five minutes just defining everything. I'll just say nothing at all. Sorry. Whoa. Judgment. Let me honor the holiday and understand that the only God is judge. The, the other way around. Anyway, this is one study that I found very fun. A little bit of psych, a little bit of neuro. Ugh, love that stuff. So let's dive in. Okay, let's run through the experimental setup. Ladies and gentlemen, the gift effect study. Researchers gathered participants who were randomly paired into couples. They were brought into one room, sat same side on the table with a black screen dividing the two of them, and they both sat in front of their own individual computer. The participants' goal here was to perform a joint social cooperative task, with the kicker being that there would be a gift exchange either at the beginning or halfway through the task. And the question was, would participants' performance on the task improve after the gift exchange? Would they develop positive emotions with each other that would, you know, have them do better on the task? And since I'm a fiend for a little brain activity, of course they were measuring a little bit of that too. How? What? They couldn't get an fMRI machine. What are you talking about, Uzma? I know I usually talk about fMRI studies, but this, in this case, they were doing something a little bit different. Not fMRI, they were doing FNIRS, which stands for Functional Near Infrared Spectroscopy. <laughs> this, folks, is a non-invasive portable method employing near-infrared light that spreads through the scalp and brain, allowing us to functionally monitor and image brain hemodynamics. Oh, I hate to do you. What's, what does hemodynamics mean? It's basically just blood flow, and typically blood is going to flow in higher volume to the parts of the brain that are currently active, that are currently working. So virtually measuring brain activity, huh? Yeah, okay, so they place little optodes on the front of their brain right over here to measure the brain activity that's going on right there. We got it? We got it. Procedure. The way that this was all going to go down was in this order. There were three task blocks in which the participants would do their little task. Basically what this was was that there was a target that flashed up on the screen for half of a second. This was either like a blue or green circle or triangle. And then subsequently they have to recognize which item the target originally was and an array of a bunch of other items by pressing some keys on the keyboard indicating which one was the right one. After the presentation of three separate target subjects were given feedback on their degree of cooperation which was represented by like two upward arrows that flashed on the screen basically just telling them good job you guys work together on the task. Cool. Hurrah! Kumbaya! Um, so. Wait, but what about the gift exchange? When did that happen? I'm so glad you asked. So, there were three task blocks that I mentioned, right? It either occurred after the first task block or the second task block. In one specific task block, they did 25 of these mini tasks, so they were often getting feedback on their degree of cooperation. Maybe like eight times in one task block. Depending on the experimental group that these participants were in, they either did the gift exchange after the first block or the second block. One participant would be a recipient and one would be a donor. So what happened? Did both of their performances change after the exchange? Well, let's see. Results. <laughs> Indeed they did, folks. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have made this video. Both participants showed higher accuracy and quicker response time in the task block after the gift exchange. And there were specifically more accurate responses when the participants did the gift exchange earlier in the task after the first block versus later in the task after the second block, really strengthening that cooperative link over there, right? And researchers did find a link to their performance with one specific part of the brain that lit up during this little task. And what part of that was it? <laughs> this was the 
dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, baby. Repeat after me. Dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Short for the DLPFC. I mean, not short for the other way around. So um, this makes a lot of sense because this part of the brain is normally involved in cognitive flexibility. The fact that it was activated here, you know, it's like, oh, it's in, it's in high gear. And it being in high gear, that's just too sweet because it applied to both the donor and the recipient. You can see in the FNRI's imaging that the DLPFC activity gets stronger after the gift exchange, depending on what experimental group they're in. Like in the early stage, you can see that it immediately starts getting stronger during the second block because that's right after the gift exchange. Whereas for the late group, you can see that it waits to kick into high gear after the gift exchange between block two and block three. It's not just the recipient that was changed. Oh no, it was also the donor that changed too. So with this data, let's talk about the paradox of altruism. Altruism supposedly benefits someone other than oneself, so not the altruist. In this scenario, the altruist is the donor, the person who gave the gift to the other person, right? But it was not only the recipient that gained higher cognitive performance after the gift exchange. No, sir, it was also the donor, and that is representative by their heightened DLPFC activity in in both of them, and also the, you know, quicker response time, higher blah 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 blah. You get it. So the donor benefited from this experience by gaining higher cognitive performance. Boom, you're not an altruist, bitch. Proved my first point. Um, that sounds kind of doom and gloom. The fact that like, oh, you know, altruism is a paradox. You're not really an altruist. But really, I think it's a beautiful thing. The fact that we gain a higher cognitive performance after a gift exchange really proves that it's like a really salient love language. Not just for the person receiving, but also for the person who's giving. It literally strengthens our connections to work better with each other, which doesn't just apply to silly little tasks like this, but also bigger problems that you will probably face together in life as friends or as partners or as family members or something like that. At least that's what I'm assuming. That's what I'm assuming from this. When I say something is effective, psychology basically just means that it's relating to an experience of feeling or emotion. Can we guess what emotion we may be getting from a gift exchange in this scenario? Can we guess? If you have guessed correctly, keep it to yourself. No spoilers here, okay. This next study just came out this year and mayhaps it is my favorite. I'm really just talking about two main studies in this, the cognitive one and then this one, but it's, it's my favorite between the two. This time when participants came in, different researchers, they were working all on their own. Oh, what's going on? Oh, this fell. Oh, that's hot. Fell onto my sweet Peter Rabbit tea set. Are you even seeing this? This is a good gift to give a tiny little Peter Rabbit tea set. Have you seen that? Oh my God. Adorable. <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyways, the participants in this study, their task was a little bit different. It was kind of like a modified dictator game. If you're familiar with game theory at all, they were given 50 hypothetical dollars to donate to 50 hypothetical charities or nonprofits. Actually, some of them were real, if we're being particular. I, I don't want to lie to you. So they could donate as much or as little as they wanted to any one of these. They did this exact setup for five separate sessions on five separate days. And after each time, they were asked to rate their level of happiness. Yes, so congratulations to the people who guessed that the, um, the emotion that we get from a gift giving is happiness you get the gift of this exclusive of me editing, as do the people who <laughs> didn't correctly guess. You also get this because I love each one of you equally. <laughs> While they did this task, of course, there was a little something going on in their brains. I have to include that little something, I have to. And the method that they used here is very interesting because it virtually allows them to turn on or off specific parts of the brain. It's like literally mind control. It's, it's so black mirror, it's so dystopian, I love it so much. This is called transcranial direct current stimulation, or TDCS. It's a non-invasive technique that uses low-level currents to alter brain activity. So what part of the brain did they turn on for this experiment? Well, little babies, this was the ventromedial prefrontal cortex. Oh my god. Well, we'll, we'll repeat it after me. Ventromedial prefrontal cortex, you say it now? Ventromedial prefrontal cortex. Yes. <laughs> Different part of the prefrontal cortex this time. See, you know, the annoying thing about my videos, I do, I'm aware of this, is that I'm like really interested in like philosophical questions. So the most neuroscientific you can get with philosophical type stuff is like brain imaging, brain altering, because you're really testing on humans. This kind of stuff, it doesn't work on a mouse model. You know, it's not like you can take the brains out and then slice them and stain them and look at them under a microscope because of ethics or whatever. 
So we have this, and the big player that pops up very often is the prefrontal cortex at different parts of the prefrontal cortex. I know my videos can get repetitive. I wanna, I do wanna get more into the brain in some videos later on. I will, I, I will, okay? But the prefrontal cortex and its thickness is really what makes us so human and what's more human than philosophy. That like animals don't think about that. <laughs> Animals don't think about morals. Anyways, these researchers in this experiment stimulated the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, aka the VNPFC. She has a lot of roles, a lot of roles, but one of the big ones is emotional regulation. Hello, emotions often play like a really big deal in gift giving. Hello. So how does this all connect? After researchers stimulated the VNPFC, did they see any kind of changes in their behavior? Oh, result time. Yes, indeed, guys. Yes, indeed. They reported greater happiness. As a matter of fact, that is something that they did. They did report greater happiness. I'll show you a little graph over here. Do you see how the happiness builds over each session of VMPFC stimulation? There were five total and it just builds after each one, eventually reporting more happiness than those in the sham group than those that did not receive stimulation. This indicates the role in the VMPFC and the happiness that we get from gift giving. Some people think that oxytocin plays a role in this. I did find some studies that supported that and then some studies that actually said the opposite. So I don't know how confident I am in sharing that. But I do have these extras linked down in the description along with a few extra papers on happiness and gift giving if you're interested in learning a little bit more because there are some other parts of the brain that do come into play. There's this one 2020 paper down there that showed people who spent more money on others instead of themselves reported greater happiness. And I, I would go on, but this video would be far too long. And I've already proved my point being altruism, <laughs> more like all false-ism. I don't think that delivery was very good. Altruism, because I have to emphasize that. So altruism, more like all false-ism. When we engage in an altruistic deed, we not only gain higher cognitive performance, but also happiness effective benefits, people. Sure, altruism doesn't give us material goods, but it does give us immaterial goods, that warm glow that we feel, that warm glow that we feel after helping others. And who's to say these gains aren't beneficial to us? Who's to say cognition and happiness is not a gain? Who's to say that? Not I. Mm -mm. We do gain something from altruism, which is paradoxical to the whole idea of altruism because we're supposedly not supposed to benefit from it. Okay, fight me after this one. Imagine like another YouTuber staunchly disagrees with me it comes out with a video that like is like no I'm gonna prove my point and how altruism is like a real thing that doesn't benefit us at all And they create their whole little video essay and then I fight back against them again And then we take it to the ring Jake Paul style We get our own Netflix special. Oh my god I would love to fight someone like that. I Don't think I have it in me, but I would love the attention <laughs> Important note, one of these things that these detractors could bring up against me that will, you know, we'll work it out in the ring, right? There are certain elements that I left out in the study because I just wanted to use the specific results that support my thesis. That's not to say that the stuff that I excluded doesn't support my thesis, but it's just not all inclusive. I just want to make my videos more accessible and digestible to the general public. And I feel like if I included all of the stuff that they did in that study, it would just be confusing. If you're interested in learning a little bit more, I always have everything linked down in the description. So check it out if you want some dense reading for the holiday times. <laughs>Let's recap what we learned. Gift giving, one of the world's truest deeds of altruism, actually does benefit us, which is paradoxical to altruism. What do we benefit from? What do we gain? We gain cognitive benefits, better cognitive performance on tasks, and effective benefits. We gain happiness, baby. We literally gain happiness. And we learned what parts of the brain play a role in both. Both of these things may be immaterial, but nonetheless, we get them when we give proving once and for all that altruism does benefit us, and it is paradoxical because, because of these two things. Boom. While researching this video, I found a great article, very readable and accessible, that gives a good gift giving guide from the perspective of psychology. Because oftentimes we'll get wrapped up in the good feelings that we gain from gift giving that we don't often give appropriately to like the loved ones in our life or other people in our life. Sometimes as the giver, we often gift items that have more monetary value as opposed to practicality, even though recipients prefer practicality over that. And it goes on and on. So I recommend reading if you're interested. I don't know if it will help you very much because I'm releasing this video very close to like Christmas time. You're probably done with your holiday shopping, but 
It may help. <laughs> Frankly, me proving that altruism is a paradox isn't some kind of doom and gloom thing. I think it's actually very helpful for us to be a little bit more self-aware and gift appropriately. And if we know this, then we will feel better. So yeah, giving may be a little bit selfish, but the more happiness we dole out to others, the more happiness we get in return. And that is a beautiful thing. That is just a beautiful thing. And if you're feeling particularly giving this season, I have a couple of organizations that you can give to linked in my description. It's always good to think about other people other than yourself. Like me, I gave you the gift of this video, so now you can give me the gift of your like and comment and subscribe. Trust me, it will make you feel better. And if you don't believe me, then rewatch the video. I'm really glad you like my neuroscience videos. I do make some book videos here and there too. It makes sense, honestly, because I'm like all over the place on this channel and it would be better if I just like streamline my content into one thing, but I really don't want to. I, like, I really don't want to. I want to do everything. If you have suggestions as someone who's not a reader, any kind of book content that you would be interested in, that would be massively helpful to me because I want your views, bitch, please. I love having the balance of a book video and a neuroscience video because it's really representative of me. Maybe not everyone but you guys can suck it i'm just kidding i'm sorry love all love so a suggestion could be another gift that you give me anyways i really appreciate you guys thank you for existing and happy holidays